Hey guys, it's Vol here, and for the first time, I'm going to be doing a painting tutorial video commentary. And uh, over the last six months, I've had a lot of people asking me uh, what paint colors did you use for your circle Orboros miniatures. How did you paint them? What did you do? And all of my uh, YouTube commentaries about battle reports, but I, th I thought I'd finally decide to do something that's more related to painting. So bear with me through here, and I'm going to talk you through the process uh, through which I paint a Circle Orbros Wolf Rider miniature, Thun Wolf Rider. And you can see this photo on the left. That's the uh, Thun Wolf Rider miniature that I painted many, many months ago when I first started Circle. And on the right is a spray white undercoated Circle Orbros miniature that I'm going to be painting for the tutorial. And um, I'm not going to be painting it exactly the same way. I'm going to be making some subtle differences. But ultimately, it's going to be ending up looking uh, very similar. And I've just got to say, guys, that uh, in my own opinion, I'm a bit of a sloppy painter. I'm not the world's best painter. When I go to tournaments, I'm usually in the sort of top 10 best painted, but I never get any painting prizes because I don't go that extra mile. I don't quite take the, the finesse and care of other painters in terms of presentation, and there's always somebody who really does it a lot better than I do. But I, I like to keep my standards high. I've got a lot of free time. I spend a lot of uh, dedication on to, to gaming, and I think it's very important for your miniatures to look really good. And um, I think were I to paint my circle army differently, I probably would use different paints. I would recommend different brushes to other people. I would use different. I would recommend different styles. But for those people looking to learn maybe a couple of things from what I do, feel free to keep watching. So let's go to the next photo where um, here's the first step. What I've decided to do is undercoat my miniature brown. And this is using a paint called uh, Leather Brown, which is from Vallejo. And the other guys that do the Flames of War stuff. And um, to be honest, guys, you could always undercoat your miniature using the Vallejo Brown Spray Coat. Uh, any sort of brown spray coat is fine. The reason I've, why I've gone for brown is because that if you, um, you leave any of the brown undercoat as is, like if you miss a spot somewhere, it's still a very natural sort of autumn, you know, forest theme sort of color. And that's why I didn't go for pure black, although the miniature would look fine if you started with white or black or whatever. But for, for my own purposes, I've decided to try black out, uh, sorry, brown out for this entire army. And that's how I've gone, gone with it. But just, uh, you know, this was hand-painted brown in my case and this for this particular miniature. So just keep the paint fairly uh, watery. Keep it fairly consistent and smooth right through the whole model. You don't really want to cake the recesses of the sculpt with too much uh, paint clogging it up. So next photo, um, here's the most interesting thing. Um, I've got this paint sitting around called uh, Green Ink, which is a Games Workshop paint. Uh, so it's called Dark Green Ink, and it's actually out of production. I don't think you can buy it anymore. But uh, one time I showed up to the game club, and this guy was just giving away paints that he was never going to use anymore. So I just picked out the Dark Green Ink from his little collection there and uh, started using it in my models. And my entire Circle Oberos army basically starts out spray painted or hand uh, painted brown and then undercoated with this uh, this green ink which really gets into the recesses in most cases and for the parts of the model where I don't really paint over that green ink uh, gives it that very sort of foresty ethereal sort of look without being too dark without being too black and um, that's what I've done. But um, were I to start the entire project over again and just paint a brand new uh, Circle Obros army, I would probably just use the Jedi paints because uh, Bedab Black, uh, Devil in Mud, just such good washes, and you know even as Sermon Blue, Leviathan Purple, the washes that I use heavily in my Minoth stuff, which looks pretty good. So you don't really have to sort of go out and find yourself a green ink or green wash. It's just I happen to have one, and that's what I was doing here. So that's part of why my circle models look the way they do. So, you know, the main point is use a wash to get into the recesses or just spray paint your model black, and you've got a very sort of dark starting point to start with where you sort of overlay that with dry brushing of, you know, lighter colors. So next image, here's an example of that. Um, basically going over the wolf itself, just going the wolf at the stage, not the Thun Wolf Rider herself, with Codex Grey, which is a uh, Games Workshop paint. 
and I use Codex Grey on all of my armies really. Um, heavily used them with the Warriors of Chaos Fantasy. Um, used it a fair bit with the High Elves, I think, in, in Warhammer Fantasy. And um, during Circle of Ouroboros, basically painting everything with mixes of Chaos, uh, or Codex Grey, but other things. But just the base layer of the Wolf Codex Grey, and I'll be highlighting him later. But as you can see, that's just the first sort of blocking in the color. But leaving the um, the brown undercoat and the the, the the green ink in there uh, to some degree. Next image, um, just picking out the parts of the model that I want to block in the colors with with another color. Again, from the Citadel Games Workshop color range, Snot Green. For some reason, I've called it Snot Green. I don't think that this color looks anything like Snot, but uh, it is a very sort of generic green color which I, I quite like and I think if I repainted my circle army I'd probably still use this color I quite like it and it it highlights quite well but at the moment the the purpose of this stage of the painting is just to really paint over those parts the colors that look like they are made out of cloth or leather or some sort of artificial material so the body of the wolf or the thun wolf rider or her hair or anything like that not painted green, but anything that looks like leather or skin uh, or dried skin that is, um, or some sort of wrapping, like her clothing and her mask and her shield, all painted with this green color, just to sort of differentiate that from the you know organic sort of living material of their flesh and fur, and um, that's a starting point. So next photo, going to her skin. What I've done here is I've actually mixed two colors together. This is bronzed flesh from the Citadel Games Workshop range and another color, Goblin Green, uh, again from Games Workshop. And it produces this very sort of greenish Kermit the Frog, Kermit the Frog, Kermit the Frog look. And um, the idea here here is just to make the Wolf Rider Thorn Wolf Rider here herself look as though she's not particularly human. She's sort of a forest dwelling being. And as I begin to highlight that color up, I'll simply add more and more bronze flesh to it. But there'll still be that very sort of um, greenish under underglow to it, under un, under color to it. And that will contrast somewhat to the actual um, snot green effect that I've given to the actual clothing items itself. So next photo you can see here that, that I've actually put in a layer of bronze flesh and goblin green over that sort of flesh color and that's further sort of warmed the colors up. It's actually heated the colors uh, to give them a differentiation from the, the wolf's fur and the, uh, the snot green from the actual clothing. And again if you go to the next photo um, I've highlighted that even further. I've even added some skull white to the skin and I usually do my highlighting in, in sort of one phase rather than sort of um, you know doing one highlight and then going to the other other colors and highlighting them and then coming back because you know I'm actually highlighting before the the actual palette of color dries I'm leaving a swab of goblin green and bronze flesh on the palette and actually mixing it together and then just adding more and more bronze flesh as I go over and uh, you know continually highlighting it up so that seems to have worked. Next photo, what I've moved on to is actually um, coating up the uh, the weapons with a particular color called Narlock Green. That's spelled K-N-A-R-L-O-C. That's again from Games Workshop Citadel Colors. And what I've done is I've actually colored the, the javelins um, and just only the javelins with that color because I've, I've wanted them to look like a very sort of earthen sort of natural material almost like green stone but almost like polished stone just come from somewhere in the forest that found these and actually put them together and that's the way I've done them. I didn't want them to look metallic. I haven't actually used any metallic colors at all uh, in my, my whole circle army. And that's the look that I've gone for. And um, I think if I redid this army, uh, I might use something else, but um, it seems to have worked. And I quite like that Nalak green color. It's, uh, it's a foundation paint. And um, I, I quite like using the GW uh, foundation paint colors because they're very sort of, they're very thick. And um, you can water them down a lot if you like, but you can also keep them very thick and they're quite good for dry brushing. So that's the way I've done that. So next photo, you can sort of see um, that I've sort of done another layer on the base. With the basing for my army, I put down the Gale Force 9 grit that I find. Um, if you look up Gale Force 9 on the internet, that's G-A-L-E, -G then Force 9. Um, 
you can buy a lot of sort of hobby material in from like um, terrain and scenic stuff, but also basin grit. And they do three different kinds of basin grit, the, the fine, medium, and heavy. And I've even put a, like a big sort of um, like boulder in the middle of the base to help sort of block out the um, the little ridge that comes in the actual base where you put the, the wolf riders sort of uh, your basing part in. But I've just put all the grit in, and then I've just um, I've undercoated it with this uh, this leather brown from Vallejo. Then I've gone over the base with vermin brown from Games Workshop, which is quite a an orangey brown color, and that's helped to sort of um, I think contrast from the greens and the grays of the model, and just put a, a completely different sort of feel in there, but still keeping it to the the very forest na natural sort of earthwork feel of the of the miniature and the color scheme. And I've just sort of brushed over it and left a lot of the uh, leather brown showing from the base, but uh, brought it up a bit with the, the leather brown that is, I'm um, sorry, the, uh, the vermin brown. Next image, um, what I'm going to start doing here is actually highlighting the, 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 the green, the snot green color. And really it's just a matter of mixing snot green with skull white. And for this first stage, and I think this is probably one of the most important stages of making the miniature, you know, look, you know, good rather than just sort of it's painted, you know, for tournament standards. But taking it up that level to where it looks good is um, actually highlighting. And this is the phase which I think a lot of newer painters find difficult. And really, it's just a matter of not watering down your paints too much. Like when you when you water your paints down, you're covering large sort of flat surfaces of area. But when you're dry brushing, and that's the technique that I use for highlighting, you wipe a lot of the paint off your brush, and then just sort of uh, pick out the the higher higher you know contours of the sculpt, and just brush over very lightly and gently with what paint is left on the brush and create a sort of a lighter effect on the higher parts without actually wiping over the, the lower areas. And with this green mix with white, you can see that I've gone over all of the sort of bandaged and cloth material and the pouch and the, the arm and leg band from the wolf and just brought up those, uh, those higher areas with white a bit more so that's where it starts to look good. So if you go to the next photo, what I've done is simply I've just left what was left of the paint on the palette after finishing the job, just adding more white to it and then going over again but leaving even less of it uh, completed and just striping or, or wiping over the um, higher areas with white and just bringing the color up and highlighting it further until I've got a point where you can still see a lot of the parts that I haven't actually touched and the lower parts of the of the green and you've got several different shades of green appearing on the model which is so important for look, making it look good from a difference from a distance rather so next photo again I've actually just you know gone a step further and you can do this as many steps as you like and usually I highlight my models with with important colors like this three or four times until I've got to a point where it's actually looking uh, quite contoured and quite highlighted if you go to the next photo, um, in this stage I was really just working on the grey of the wolf, just adding, you know, what I did is I used Codex Grey by itself without any mixes and dry brushed it over the entire wolf model, but for this stage I've added some white to the Codex Grey and just gone over the, the fur again and just brought those colours out in the same way that I did, that I did with the green. And next photo again, um, you can see that I've just basically, um, you know, highlighted even further. I've got um, the the white, uh, so the grey looking very white at this point, and just really bringing it out, bringing it out. And I think you can do this as much as like I've only done it two or three times with the, the actual wolf fur at this point, because later on I'll be going over with pure white, but that will be the last stage of the model. Next photo, um, I've neglected to do anything with the hair. So I've used a paint called uh, Iandan Dark Sun, which is a foundation paint from Citadel Miniatures. Um, I've used that sort of ochre-y sort of yellow color because it's not too bright yellow. It's almost sort of believable for a, you know, a, a Thun woman's hair. Um, but it sort of suits the brown and yellow and, and gray of the forest and, and natural colors a little bit better. Um, and it's not... Um, not as as mundane as sort of pure black or brown hair, and I didn't really think I would get a such a good a good effect. But I was quite happy with the way the the, the yellow turned out, and of course I'll be highlighting this uh, further once the white comes along. Next photo. Um, at this point, I'm going back to the uh, the meta, sort of the the stone colors of the javelins themselves, 
and just highlighting up and um, I've taken this picture after a couple of stages of the highlight I've gone over with Narlock Green mixed with Skull White from Games Workshop again and highlighted up just on that note guys um, obviously there are a few different companies that do colors um, obviously Privateer Press have got their P3 range which I haven't tried out the one time I tried to order it from the website, um, I couldn't get the, the massive multi-pack with, with all the paints, so I, I just left it. You can also get paints from Vallejo, although only two or three of them I actually like. Reaper Miniatures do a, um, do a wonderful range, and I ought to get some more of their stuff because uh, from their sample pot, I really loved it. And the Games Workshop, obviously very, very readily available. If you've already been painting up Warhammer Armies, you'll probably have a whole lot of um, Games Workshop paints lying around like I do. But in this photo, you can basically see that just the weapons I've highlighted with white, and with these javelins in particular, because the actual point, the, the spear, the javelin head, has got a sort of contour and it's split into two halves, what, is it, what I've done is I've just left one half with the uh, Nullock Green undercoat, and the other half with the highlighting effect on it, so it looks like the sun is sort of, or the light is catching sort of one half of the, the javelin, which seems a little bit more realistic. Going to the next photo, I've gone back to the base again and I've actually mixed Vermin Brown, which was my initial initial dry brush over the base. I've mis mixed Vermin Brown with Skull White and I've gone over it and then done a, another subtle sort of highlight with another mix of more Skull White. Then I've gone over the, uh, brace, the base around the side with more Leather Brown from Vallejo just to polish it up and uh, make the base look really good. And uh, next photo, this is where the white comes in. I've basically just picked out pure skull white. I've gone over the edging of some of the, uh, like the shield and some of the wolf's fur and occasionally bits of the uh, the green sort of clothing and here and there and just really picked it out because I think that you can't really get much better contrast from sort of inking and washing a model and painting it a very dark undercoat and then finally using skull white on the bare essential highlights and you've got the maximum contrast you can and I think when you're, when you're looking at models from a distance on tabletop that is what works the best and if you go to the next photo that's the finished model what I've done here is I've just basically PVA'd um, some, some glue spatters onto the base and then just stuffed some really basic um, you know basic flock some nice bright stuff and I've chosen that basing flock because it's very sort of generic stuff but it's also a different shade of green than the actual model so it creates a bit more depth there and you can actually when you look at this model you've got a lot of colors working that are in the same sort of theme but they're different for each from each other and they actually make it look quite rich and that's the final result and um, you know again I'm not the best painter it could look better I could have gone through some more subtle steps and taken more care with it but this is a fairly easy way to paint a model. I think the hardest parts of this are um, the highlighting, really, and just being experienced with how much brush, how, sorry, how much paint to put in your brush and how well to highlight and um, how how to actually move your brush when you're dry brushing. But if you just, you know, basically follow through, you can create a miniature that looks pretty good. As long as you're really, really, re relatively careful and patient, you just take your time. So I think this is the sort of standard miniature that a lot of people can achieve, even if you don't have a lot of painting experience. You can really just sort of work towards it and as long as you're patient enough you can come up with it but um, guys there's a bit of an overview of how you achieve a, a miniature like this and um, you know all the best with your own painting if you want to see more of my stuff obviously check out my bat reps and have a look at some of the links in my video description catch you later